Welcome to lesson 10b, the continuity equation. In this lesson, we'll derive the continuity equation, which is the differential equation for conservation of mass. We'll look at some simplifications, and then I'll do some example problems. The derivation involves examination of the flow into and out of a tiny control volume. We'll shrink that control volume to zero in the limit. We utilize Taylor series expansions. Consider x, y, z coordinates, and I'll attempt to draw a three-dimensional control volume. This is a tiny control volume with dimensions dx, dy, and dz. It's a stationary control volume through which some flow is moving, and we'll imagine the limit as the volume goes to zero. This volume, of course, is dx, dy, dz, since it's a rectangular volume. We'll use Taylor series expansions to study the mass flow across each face. I'll review Taylor series expansions quickly. Suppose we have some function, phi equal phi of x, that looks something like this. This point is phi when x equals 0. The slope at x equals 0 is d phi dx, the derivative, at x equals 0. At some distance delta x, we want to calculate this point, phi of delta x. The Taylor series expansion is that phi of delta x is equal to phi of 0 plus d phi dx delta x plus 1 over 2 factorial d squared phi dx squared delta x squared plus an infinite series of higher order terms. As delta x approaches 0, these higher order terms like delta x squared, delta x cubed, etc. become negligible. For example, if delta x is 10 to the minus 6th, delta x squared is 10 to the minus 12th. So this part, ignoring these terms, is what we'll use and we call that a truncated Taylor series, truncated to first order. This is what we'll use in our derivation. Now let's apply this to conservation of mass. Here's our tiny control volume of dimensions dx, dy, and dz, and we examine the mass flow across each of these six faces. Right at the center of this control volume, we have density rho and velocity components u, v, and w. But the mass flow rate through each face is equal to rho times the normal component of velocity through that face times the area of the face. For example, in the x direction, the left face of this control volume, the distance from the center to that face is dx over 2. At the center, let's take rho u as our anchor point from which to do the Taylor series expansion. So we write rho u at the center plus del del x of rho u times the distance from the center, which is dx over 2, but it's in the negative x direction, so we put in a negative sign. So this term in parentheses is rho u at the left face. And then we multiply by the area of that left face, which is dy dz. We do a similar thing at the right face, except with a plus sign, since from the center to this point is dx over 2 in the positive x direction. And the area of the face is also dy dz. So this grouping of terms is the mass flow rate through the right face of the control volume. And more technically, it's that term plus the higher order terms but we're truncating the Taylor series expansion, so we're using only this term for rho u at the center of the face. And when we multiply by the area, this is the mass flow. We do the same thing in the y direction. There's flow coming in from the bottom and coming out the top, and our distance from the center to the face is either dy over 2 or negative dy over 2, and the area is dx dz. We do a similar thing in the z direction. These six terms represent the mass flow rate through all six faces of this control volume. Now we add up all the positive mass flow rates into the control volume and all the negative mass flow rates out of the control volume. I call these sigma m dot in, where we sum the left, bottom, and rear face, and sigma m dot out, where we sum the right, top, and front face. Now we plug into our integral conservation of mass equation for a control volume from a previous lesson, where we have expressions above for these two terms, but what about this term? This is an unsteady term with the del rho del t integrated over the whole control volume. Since we defined rho at the center of the volume, we approximate this integral as del rho del t at the center times d volume, which is dx dy dz. So this becomes the left side of our equation, and the right side is these six terms minus these six terms. And you can see that many of the terms drop out. For example, we see rho u dy dz, and we subtract rho u dy dz, so this term and this term go away. 
Similarly, these terms all go away. We're left with just the derivative terms, which I summarize in this equation. But since dx dy dz occurs in each term, it drops out. We move everything to one side of the equation, and we have our continuity equation in Cartesian coordinates. Continuity equation is simply another way of saying the differential equation for conservation of mass. Now recall from your math class that del dot g, or the divergence of a vector g in Cartesian coordinates, is given by this, where the gradient vector is del x, del y, del z, three components, and g is some arbitrary vector with components gx, gy, gz. We can see that these three terms are of that form if we let g be rho v, where v is a vector, the velocity vector, with these components. So in more general terms, we can write this as del rho del t plus del dot rho v equals zero. This is the general vector form of the continuity equation, and our derivation is complete. Now let's look at some simplifications. I repeated the equation here. This equation is general, steady or unsteady, compressible or incompressible, and it's valid for any coordinate system. Let's look at some simplifications or some special cases. Suppose the flow is steady but compressible. Well, steady implies that del del t of anything is zero, so here del rho del t, this term, is zero. So we get del dot rho v equals zero. What if we have incompressible but unsteady flow? Well, incompressible means that rho is a constant, therefore del rho del t is zero. Again, this term, which is the same result we had here but for a different reason. So we get the same equation. But if rho is a constant, we can take it outside the gradient. And dividing both sides by rho, we get rid of the rho. So our expression is del dot v equals zero for incompressible unsteady flow. Notice that the unsteady term has dropped out even though this flow is unsteady. In fact, rho has dropped out of the equation. What does this mean physically? It means that this equation applies at any instant in time. The flow immediately or instantaneously adjusts itself such that this equation is satisfied. I can explain this better by using the speed of sound. For a compressible flow, like the flow of air, if we have some object and we just move it, there will be pressure waves that move forward at some speed c, which is the speed of sound. c is finite. So at some point here, the movement is sensed at some later time, since it takes time for the sound waves to travel, or these pressure waves from moving the object to travel to location x. For an incompressible flow, c is infinite. If I have the same body that moves in the same way, in an incompressible fluid, the movement is felt instantaneously at this location. In fact, it's felt instantaneously everywhere in the flow. Finally, we can have both incompressible and steady flow, but the equation is the same as that for incompressible unsteady flow, namely del dot v equals zero. We'll call this the incompressible continuity equation. This will be our workhorse equation for almost everything we do from here on in this course. Before I do some examples, I'll write it out in Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates. In Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z, and u, v, w, our workhorse equation becomes del u del x plus del v del y plus del w del z equals zero. In cylindrical coordinates, r theta z and u r u theta uz, this vector equation becomes 1 over r del r u r del r plus 1 over r del u theta del theta plus del u z del z equals 0. These two equations are valid for either steady or unsteady incompressible flow. Now we're ready to do some examples. Suppose we have a velocity field in Cartesian coordinates. The x component, y component, and z component of velocity are given. We want to calculate this variable b such that this velocity field is valid for steady incompressible flow. Well, to be a valid steady incompressible velocity field, it must satisfy continuity, which I rewrote here. These are partial derivatives, so you have to be careful when you evaluate them. We take del u del x by pretending y and z are constant, so del u del x here is just 3. Similarly, del v del y is just b and w is 0, so del w del z is 0. So our answer is b equal minus 3. 
In the next example, we'll extend this where we have u and w, but v is completely unknown. We have to derive an expression for v so that this is a valid, steady, incompressible velocity field. To solve this, we note again that we must satisfy the continuity equation, taking our partial derivatives, del u del x is a, we'll leave del v del y as is, and del w del z is zero. So our equation becomes del v del y equal negative a, which we can integrate v equal negative a y plus a constant. No, not a constant. Here's where students get tripped up. This is a partial derivative, and when we integrate, we don't add a constant, but rather a function of the other two variables. So our answer is that v equal negative a plus a function of x and z, where this function can be anything because v appears only as a derivative with respect to y. We can verify, is continuity satisfied? Well, again, del u del x is a, del v del y is negative a, and this function contributes nothing since it's not a function of y, and w was zero. So yes, it does satisfy our continuity equation for any function f of x and z. Now I'll do two similar problems in cylindrical coordinates. Here we have a 2D flow in the r theta plane with ur is unknown and u theta is some constant times theta. uz is zero and it's a 2D problem. We want to calculate this unknown velocity component ur such that it's a valid, steady, incompressible velocity field. Well, again, we have to satisfy continuity. And with these extra r's, it gets a little trickier. 1 over r, del del r. Since we don't know u r, we'll write this term as is, plus 1 over r, del u del theta, which is c, plus 0 equals 0. In this case, the r's in the denominators cancel. So del del r of r u r equal minus c, which we integrate. The integral of the left side is r u r, and then on the right side, the integral is negative c r, plus a function of the other variable. In general, this would be f of theta and z, but this is a 2D flow, so I'll just write a function of theta. Well, we're not quite done yet. Let's divide both sides of this equation by r. We get u r is negative c, plus some function of theta over r, where f of theta can be any function we desire. I'll leave it as an exercise for you to verify this. Plug this equation into here, and you can see that r u theta is negative r c plus f of theta. When we take the r derivative, we get minus c, so we have minus c over r plus c over r equals zero. Finally, I'll do this example. Again, we have a 2D flow in the r theta plane with this velocity field. We want to calculate this constant a so that we have a valid, steady, incompressible velocity field. So for the fourth time, we have to satisfy continuity equation. Here del u z del z is zero, and let's multiply by r for the two remaining terms, and the right-hand side, of course, which doesn't change. So we have del del r of r u r plus del u theta del theta equals zero. From these velocity components, this becomes del del r of negative three plus two r, and this derivative is just a, so those two terms add up to zero. This partial derivative with respect to r gives us two, and thus a is minus two. We verify by writing out the first two terms again, since this term is zero, and plug in this value of a, we get one over r times two, plus one over r times negative two, where we've plugged in negative two for a, which is indeed zero. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.